I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together in unison the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 50 verses one through six. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silent. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with a sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and I, as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 50 men of the company of prophets also went, went and stood 
at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a, whirl, ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say in unison the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lesson from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Let us say together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of his life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, 
and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Let's speak to them. In the name of the one holy and living God. Well, good morning, saints. It's so good to be with you this morning this way. I'm grateful to all who have helped make worship here possible. I am delighted to see so many of you gathered, whether you're here on Zoom this morning or tuning in later on through the YouTube channel. It's great to see that this community is holding together through this really difficult time, a time that's extended. In fact, I had sent an email to one of our team members early this morning saying that, oh, it's Lent, it's, Lent is coming, it's almost here. <laughs> and, um, and she remarked, this whole year is Lent, it's redundant. <laughs> and I thought, I could put that on a t-shirt, you know. It feels so much like we have been in Lent for so long. And yet here we are, the Feast of the Transfiguration, where we end up every year, no matter how many Sundays after the Epiphany were given, we always end up on the mountaintop before get, going into Lent. The thing about it is, I don't know about how it is for you, but February is always going to be a thing for me now. In my sort of um, rotating photos that keep coming up on my, on my um, phone or on Facebook, reminding me of what I was doing a year ago, there are all of these scenes of gathering with hundreds of people for, you know, consecrating the Bishop of Michigan or ordaining one of my colleagues from the Diocese of Chicago or the Olympic marathon trials. And there are all these scenes that I experienced from last year where there are literally thousands of people huddled close, hugging and kissing and being, you know, doing all the things that we are not able to do right now. And part of me thinks that was such a mountaintop. Gosh, I wish I could just, I mean, that's what I want to go back to. I miss those times. They felt like, the, the highlight of living, being able to celebrate and to be with people and to eat food in proximity and to sing and all of those things. And with every day in February that goes by, it get closer to the end of the month where things just stopped. And it's almost as if I went from the mountaintop and just cascaded all the way down to the bottom and into lockdown. And the height of the pandemic. What we didn't know last February, or at least I didn't get, even though I saw a few people with masks in the airports as I traveled around, that the pandemic was already with us. It just hadn't spread in the way um, that it has since. So we know in all of the various ways that we have memories of that there are these mountaintop experiences that we wish we could hold on to. And a, this end of the epiphany, the Feast of the Transfiguration always reminds me almost with a jolt that I don't quite want. It reminds me that, oh no, you cannot stay. You're not meant to stay. And so this lesson we just heard from the gospel of the transfiguration where Jesus is up on the mountaintop sort of shining in this dazzling brightness and he is confirmed in his brightness and identity and possibility with the great prophets. He's got Moses and Elijah up there. And Jesus' disciples, Peter, James, and John, are there to witness this incredible, incredible vision. 
And of course, Peter, I mean, I don't like to debunk Peter all the time, but Peter is like the most human of all the disciples. Peter is Peter. And he says, I just want to preserve this moment. And frankly, I can't blame him. Think about it. It's a ma literal mountaintop experience where glory is being show for shown forth. And, you know, if, if I were there, I, I like to say I would have been that, you know, crazy, not too smart person, like getting a selfie with Jesus. Like, come on, let's hold on to this moment. We don't want to let it go. You want to remember it always. But they can't stay up there forever. You can't stay a stasis. You can't stay in any one place forever, even when it's glorious. And then on that mountaintop, this voice of God comes down, reminding Jesus that he is God's beloved. He is God's beloved. Words that are sticky, even if the moment isn't sticky. Jesus is God's beloved. We are God's beloved too. So how do we live in this time? How do we live in this time when there's so much that we would love to go back to, which seems like those really were the good old days, even if they weren't all that great, they were much better than where we are. And yet we long for a future that's different in so many different ways. And our job is those who follow Jesus, who claim Jesus as the one who centers our lives, who's the reason why we do the things we do, the way we, reason why we're even here on this Sunday morning, it's the reason why we give so sacrificially to those we love and those we don't even know, is because when you come off the mountaintop, we're coming back to the everyday reality where God is also still present. God is also abundantly present in the midst of all the hurting and the pain and the death and the difficulties and the dark places and the brokenness that is down at the bottom of the mountain. And our call is to faithfully attend to that and to follow Jesus to the cross, follow Jesus to the other mountain that's Calvary because there's something on the other side that another mountaintop that we need to experience called resurrection. In these days when it feels like that's so, like it's a perpetual Lent, holding on to the reality that God always raises the dead. God always resurrects our hope. God always resurrects life and transforms it and makes it different, better, is the hope that I cling to as we make our way through this pandemic and a time that feels like we are so, maybe a little more certain than we were a year ago, but still some things aren't clear. So holding on to the things that we know are rock solid, that God has been through pandemics before, that God has walked faithfully with God's people through all kinds of horrific situations and seen them on the other side. And God is walking with us too, even when the losses are deep and great, when there's so much grieving, that God is with us in that too working with us, being present with us so that we might be able to experience resurrection on the other side. But God's also calling us not to rush to that resurrection. <laughs> so we're, we're called to actually use this time, this coming time of Lent, this time of Lent that we are in for the last year to reflect on that phrase that we might almost forget because we feel like God says it all the time. And God says to Jesus, you are my beloved. When God affirms to each and every one of us that you are my beloved, that is a call for us to, even when things seem bleak, to help in our own way, whatever way that looks like, to help make that true or help make it a little bit more believable in the eyes and the hearts of others. I am convinced y'all that the reasons why things are so broken and hard right now is that there is a lot of inability for people to know what that really means, to really believe that God or anybody else could love them so unconditionally and that that love is actually the same doled out with a double dose of spirit as we heard in the first lesson that that is actually the same for everybody. The, uh, the ways in which we 
you know, walk away from God in various ways and sort of tend to the things that are not life-giving, the seven deadly sins you might think of, of covetousness or pride, of greed, selfishness. I think all of those are tied up with not believing the story, the reality that God calls each and every one of us beloved. We might even claim that that identity for ourselves, and then we might undo it with the things that we do every day by saying we're not good enough, our bodies are not beautiful enough, our, our, um, our lives are not filled with enough things and riches. Like we keep undercutting that message and God says, do not do that. Don't believe that. You are my beloved. You are loved and you are light and you are part of the healing of the brokenness of this world, go and do it and be it and share it. I'm convinced that if we were all focused on that way of living, the world would look dramatically different, dramatically different because we would be living out that call that Jesus reminded us of the great commandment to love God with all of our heart, soul, strength and mind, the way God loves us and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I get frustrated because it's so simple and so hard. So simple, so uncomplicated, but so hard. All of you at St. John's know that we are in this time of transition in a lot of other ways too, as you are hoping to call a new priest. And it may be tempting to think about what life could be like if you could just go back to a magical period in the past. But I wanna assure you that God is with you in this time of transition as well and that the person who is called to walk with you into God's full future is out there waiting to discern with you about what that looks like. It might feel like you once had mountaintops and now you're at the bottom of the mountain, but God is with you. And I believe that there are more mountaintop experiences ahead, not just in your call for a new priest, but in all the ways in which we live this life. You show me in so many different ways what's possible for that community of Bedford and Bedford needs you. All of that message about God's belovedness that you are claiming, that you are hoping to share with the world is critical. So you've got to be here. You've got to be in Bedford and the community bringing all of that love and light of Jesus in the, in the way that only St. John's can do it. So I believe in your future, God believes in it. And as we like to say, all will be well, even if we can't quite see it from this vantage point. I wanna leave you with a poem that I love to think about on this Transfiguration Day. It's a call to listen to Jesus, who reminds us of our be belovedness all the time, to really not just hear it as a theoretical, but to own it right here in our hearts and to know it's true. This poet, this poem is by Steve Garnis Holmes, who is a Methodist pastor who recently retired. He used to write a poem a day and each one of them is a gem. But as we begin our Lenten journey, when, as we feel like we're in perpetual Lent, it seems like words that might restore our hopes in our hearts. Here it is. Jesus shows us the way of the cross, but we back away. We're afraid of the loss and pain, the sacrifice, the many forms of death involved in the way of radical self-giving. The way of the cross, of love amidst fear, of entering the suffering of the world, of confronting injustice at great cost, this way will take you through dark places, but look at the light with which you'll shine. Through all your suffering, there is beauty. Even though you go through death, you will burn with a heavenly light, the light of God's love for you. The light of the rising dawn of Easter already in you. You won't understand this now. You won't understand this until after you've seen resurrection, but I'm letting you know beforehand, eventually you'll know. Jesus seems crazy his way objectionable, his teaching absurd, but it will light your way through the night. Listen to him.
each and every one of you has that light. Even as we go through Lent, perpetual Lent or calendar Lent, that light is still in you. So let it shine and let it cast away the fear and the hopelessness and despair, wherever it may be. Because there are other mountaintops and certainly resurrection awaits. Amen. Our service continues as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. I'm going to ask someone to read the versicles as I, uh, the responses after I read the versicle. Can we have a volunteer for that? We'll do, I can do that. Great, thank you. We'll start again. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise you, your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. And one more collect for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving offered silently or aloud, for whom and for what shall we pray? Oh, 
ask your prayers for St. John's Church in their search for a new priest. We pray for wardens and leaders who continue to lead in this time, for Father Tim and for other clergy who assist in the community here. Pray for Joe, our president, and for all in authority in the community of Bedford and all other others who are elected to care for our common good. We pray for those who are sick, for those with COVID, for those who care for them. We give thanks for this day. Amen. Well, greetings, saints. I'm going to ask um, Becca if there are announcements to share today. Yes, please, uh, everybody stay for some virtual coffee hour time. Um, the bishop will be staying with us for a little bit, and then the vestry will be meeting with her on a separate Zoom link after that. Um, but feel free, hang out and chat a little bit. Um, as a reminder, we're going to have our Ash Wednesday service at 6 p.m. Um, via Zoom. So hopefully everybody received their ashes. If you did not, please let me know, and I will get those to you. Um, I think that'll be kind of an interesting experience for all of us. We've not had that opportunity to give ashes or place ashes on ourselves before. Um, and remember, if you don't have your ashes, Sharon suggested the Sharpie. So let's make sure we have those ashes handy. Um, and this week would normally be our vestry meeting, which we're not going to have because we do have Ash Wednesday. So next Wednesday at six o'clock, we're actually going to start our Lenten study using the Living Well Through Lent reader. Um, I'll send that electronic PDF out. Um, it's also available online if you have gone out and have signed up for their emails already, that's there. But otherwise, we'll begin that discussion and Kathy will be leading our first discussion um, next following Wednesday, so the 24th. Um, and then we'll have our vestry meeting um, after that. And then we'll continue our Lenten studies each Wednesday. Um, and since we're not in person, if anybody has a great soup recipe you otherwise would have wanted to share, um, feel free and we'll happily pass that one around and we can all try a new soup recipe or a different one uh, from our usual. So. Um, I think those are our announcements for today. What time is that on Wednesday, Rebecca? Six o'clock. Thank you. Wonderful. And um, Becca, just a question for those who are wanting to make gifts to the for the offering today. How is that? How do people do that? Um, so as usual, you are able to go through, um, I will see. Once again, I can send this link out again, uh, but they're the diocese they've been collecting um, for us beha on behalf of the, the congregations during this COVID time uh, using the online service. You can actually make a contribution um, that way. Um, or once we get through, probably the next week, we'll do in-person office hours at church. So if you wanted to drop off or pick up your um, envelopes, a reader, anything that you want at the church, we'll begin doing those office hours again. Uh, probably not this coming Saturday, but the following, um, just so that you can make sure that there's anything that you might need, we can do that. Um, but once again, the diocese has been very kind to be able to allow us to make our contributions electronically, um, if that's easier for you. Great, thank you. I always like to make that pitch just in case others who are watching this service might want to contribute to the support of St. John's, but they, you know, they would want to know how to do that if they're not already a member. So that's great. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the church in this time. Let us continue with the general Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies 
that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.